It's 2024 and AI has taken over so many areas in our lives already and academia is one of them. There are like so many AI tools out there for academia so I wanted to create a video where I genuinely show you the three AI tools that I use regularly during my academic journey. Hi, I'm Aynur. I'm a second year PhD student at Imperial College London and I've been trying out so many AI tools for the last couple of one and a half years. For my Instagram channel I've been like recording them, testing them and all these things and there are like three tools that I use regularly that really stuck with me and I feel like they're one of the best out there to get your job done and I wanted to introduce you to them so that you benefit from them as well right so the first tool is something called research rabbit if you've watched one of my previous videos you probably have heard of this before it's a literature mapping tool so basically what it does it you feed research rabbit a couple of core papers and then it will analyze the abstract and the references and it will basically connect this paper to other papers in that research field. So let's say paper A has been cited by author B, then author B's paper will be connected to paper A, right? And this way you'll get like a beautiful overview of the paper and article landscape out there on your research field. And the best part of it is that this tool is entirely free. It's open source, no edit fees, no nothing. It's it's entirely free you can use it in every way you want and it's actually quite good because you can not only like plot uh, the relations between articles in terms of like the references but you can also change how it's been viewed in terms of timeline and then you'll see like how many papers or articles are being published at certain years and you have lots of different filter mechanisms you can filter it for first author, second author, title, abstract, published year and so on. You can also download all the references, all the citations and have it like in a beautiful spreadsheet all put together. And one of my favorite features, uh, you can also activate like email alerts. So let's say you're interested in a specific field and you put up your core papers and all the related papers and you activate that email button and then you'll get updates whenever something new in your research field is published which is amazing to stay on top of your research right and finally you can also use it to collaborate with other people you can invite like put people's email addresses on there if you have like a collection of beautiful papers and you just want to share them with your students or with your lab mates then you can put them in there and uh, you can collaborate on these things together so research rabbit is my go-to tool when I look for new literature in a field and it's just you have to try it if you haven't done so already. Moving over to the second tool. I just want to add that I'm not being paid for this video at all, right? So this is not a sponsored video. I'm literally just showing you the AI tools that I myself am using regularly, right? And I'm saying this because the next tool is called SciSpace and it has like a paid plan and a free plan. I personally use the free plan it's efficient and enough for my purpose but you can also upgrade it uh, it's not that expensive actually and you'll just see how far you get with it but what i want to say is this is the og tool out there for literature review believe me when i say this because i've tested a lot of them they've basically they started quite early with their journey and they've included step by step everything one needs for reviewing literature so what you can do is you can insert your research question and then SciSpace will give you out a summary of like five top cited papers on that research question then it will print out a table for you and you can customize the table you can say okay I just want to see in the table the limitations and the advancements key points the difficulties in this research and then it will literally create a list of all the different papers and then on the right you'll have keywords summaries of whatever you want yeah it will list the limitations it will list the experimental setup whatever you want and this is just amazing to get a first glance at what the paper is about without actually having to download and read it because when I see that this is nonsense and it's not useful for me then I won't even download and read it and it just saves time gives me a great overview I just love it okay I love it and then also 
when you're in the step where you decided to read a paper and you open it up, depending on your research field, some stuff might just be complicated, you know, complicated equations. Maybe you're new to the topic and you don't understand some formula, some derivatives or some term. Maybe they've used some vocabulary that you're not familiar with. You can just upload your paper to SciSpace and then chat with the co-pilot, ask questions. And this even works for graphs, figures, diagrams, not only for text. So that's a second super cool thing. And weirdly enough, the tool that I most often use with SciSpace is the citation generator. So you know when you put together a presentation and then you have to put down like all the references for every single thing that you use. And then each time when I want to put down a reference and I have the paper and I've downloaded it, it would always be a tedious process to like go to Google Scholar or somewhere else and find the citation for it. But with like SciSpace, I just put in the title of the paper and then I click on create citation and then it will just have it. It's so nice. It's so neat. It will give me the citation in the format that I want to. And it's just super fast. I like it much, much more than the other ways I used to do it before. And then obviously you have stuff like paraphraser, which is much broader than it is like in, in other tools. You can basically choose the tone and length of your wishes. Uh, they have all kinds of forms length and you can also translate it. So you can also like paraphrase from English to Chinese and vice versa, which is good if you're not a native speaker, right? In a certain language. So yeah, I know this sounds like a commercial, but it's not. It's just a really great tool and I can definitely recommend you to check it out. Now, coming over to the third tool, which also uses a bit of AI. It's more like a search tool. It's called Pons.org. Pons.org is like an alternative to Google Scholar for some of you who need more filters than Google Scholar has. Because I know that every single one of us scholars are using Google Scholar, right? That's the go-to tool to find literature and there's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes you just need more filters. Sometimes it is important for you to know which university published what. Sometimes you want to know, okay, how was the research funded? You want to know which countries published what to this research article through this research field, right? And with Pons, you can filter that. So you can just ask your question as you would always do in Google Scholar, put in the keywords, click on search, and then you can basically see oh, okay, the UK has done most of the research in this field, or Germany has done most of the research in this field, or this or that country. You can get that plotted. Or you can also see which are the top universities that did most of the work in this field, right? This is also super useful when you are in the process of deciding which university you want to go to, and then you put in your research question and you see, oh, wow, these are the universities world leading in this field. They've done most of the published work in this area, right? So whenever you're feel like Google Scholar is not good enough in terms of filtering your results, then lens.org is the way to go. You can filter for almost everything and much more than I've just told you. It's also super useful for patent search, not only for scholarly works, but if you're also looking into patents, your go-to place. Lens.org. All right, so I hope this video was useful for you. Summing up, we have ResearchRabbit for literature mapping, SciSpace for your literature review, and Lens.org for your literature search, right? And these three tools are more than enough for your entire literature review process. And these are the only three tools that I use really, really regularly during my work. And I can swear by their quality, they're super useful. So I just wanted to pass it on to you because I feel like it's getting quite difficult to distinguish between which AI tools are good, which are not good, which does what, are they all the same, you know? So these are the three recommendations that I have for you guys. I hope you will find them as useful as I do. If you like this video, it really means a lot if you just leave a like, a comment or subscribe to this channel because this channel is actually quite new. It's brand new it doesn't have much attention yet so each like comment or subscription means a lot to me and for this channel to help it grow and produce better videos for you guys also if you haven't done so already check out my instagram account because this is the place where i post regularly scholarly tips useful features insights tips hacks everything all about academia make sure to check it out other than that, I hope you'll have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.